today I am having fever and I am going to the hospital with symptoms of infection. Obviously, I am not going to say to the doctor that Klebsiella pneumonia has come into my body. E. coli has come into my body. Please treat me. It's not like that. All over this world are dying due to antimicrobial resistance, multi-drug resistance. You know very well there are a lot of organisms in our mouth. If you undergo a dental procedure, there is significant bleeding. And if an antibiotic is not given, then there may be bacterial colonization which can go into the body and can cause lot of problems, especially endocarditis is very commonly associated with that. Hello to all, I am Vishnu. In this video, I am going to talk to you about simple principles of antimicrobial stewardship. Now, you may have attended many conferences, many workshops. You Now, this term is actually gaining lot of popularity because we are seeing a very serious trend of antimicrobial resistance. Many people all over this world are dying due to antimicrobial resistance, multi-drug resistance. So, there are a lot of technical terms that are involved in antimicrobial stewardship. I am not going to go into that because, you know, there may be a lot of students who are listening to this. There may be a lot of people who are just going to study about antibiotics. So, if I use heavy technical terms, you know, it will be like a bouncer above your head. So... I'll be telling very simple things as in what you need to know when you are in the hospital or if you are working as a CP dealing with AMS that is antimicrobial stewardship or even if you are just a student, what are the things that you need to be aware of? Because at the end of the day, contribution only comes after awareness is created. Because you cannot contribute unless you learn. That means you cannot contribute unless you are aware. So, uh, basically antimicrobial stewardship, whenever we talk about rational use of antimicrobials, we need to understand what you mean by antimicrobial. You know, sometimes we say antibiotic stewardship, but I believe we should be talking about antimicrobial stewardship. So, antimicrobial is a particular molecule which is effective against microbes. Now, there are a lot of types of microbes. If it is a bacteria, then it is called an antibiotic. If it is a virus, it is called an antiviral. If it is a fungus, it is called an antifungal. If it is an agent against uh, protozoa, that is usually we see in malaria, we use antiprotozoals. We also use in some other diseases. If it is uh, against worm infections, then we call it as anthelmintic. So, like that, we classify antimicrobials. So basically, uh, rational use of antimicrobials is classified into three, especially antibiotics. So first is called the empiric therapy. Second is called targeted or definitive therapy. And the third is called prophylactic therapy. Now what do you mean by empiric therapy? For example, today I am having fever and I am going to the hospital with symptoms of infection. Obviously, I am not going to say to the doctor that Klebsiella pneumonia has come into my body. E. coli has come into my body. Please treat me. It's not like that. I usually go to the doctor with symptoms. So, based on my symptoms, the physician or the clinician will suspect an in infection and obviously, the physician doesn't know what organism is there or if at all an organism is there. So, the culture is sent to the laboratory so, after the culture is sent, the physician will start a broad spectrum antibiotic so that if at all some organism is there, it may be covered by that antibiotic. Because especially in scenarios like ICUs, where uh, very severe patients are admitted, there if you wait for the microbiological report to arrive and only then if you start antibiotic, something else will happen to the patient. So, empiric therapy means it is a kind of preventative therapy in which the clinician or the healthcare team doesn't know whether the person is having an infection or not, but the patient is showing symptoms of infection. So the healthcare team is starting an antimicrobial which may cover maximum organisms. So uh, different types of cultures are sent to the laboratory. We have blood culture, we have urine culture, we have pus culture, we have endotracheal culture, we have bile bronco alveolar lavage fluid mainly for pneumonia uh, we have stool culture lot, different types of cultures are there so the doctor is ordering maybe a blood culture to be sent now the blood culture is going to the microbiological lab 
the microbiologist will you know do their respective test and try to see whether there is an organism or not based on the duration required for growing the organism or culturing the organism whatever it is the report comes accordingly okay so if nothing is grown then the report comes as sterile and then it will be the duty of the clinician to de-escalate the antibiotic de-escalate means from a higher antibiotic you are going to a lower antibiotic or maybe stop it stop it completely if the situation is uh, favorable but if the culture is coming positive for example today i encountered a case in which the urine culture was positive with e coli esterichia coli it's a very common organism that is usually seen in the hospital setting so we have a culture report so in that culture report we see which are the different antibiotics effective against e coli in general how many of them are resistant how many of them are sensitive so if it is resistance it's mentioned r if it is sensitive it is mentioned as s and in some condition we mention as intermediate also it comes in between so if it is uh, if a large class of uh, antibiotics are resistant we call it as multi drug resistant extensive drug resistant and all and if all the antibiotics are effective then it is called pan sensitive condition pan sensitive means all the antibiotics are effective if most of the antibiotics are resistant only one or two are sensitive then it is called pan resistant condition or maybe extensive drug resistant condition whatever it is you can say it so after the report is coming for example in against e coli only colistin is sensitive colistin is a polypeptide antibiotic if only colistin is sensitive the in clinician will start colistin so it is a targeted therapy that means you are targeting against the particular organism now it is no more empiric so that kind of therapy in which you are targeting a particular organism with a particular antimicrobial is called definitive or targeted therapy now we come to prophylactic now many people get confused between empiric and prophylactic prophylaxis means it usually happens when you are undergoing some kind of surgical procedure for example you have a dental procedure you know very well there are lot of organisms in our mouth if you undergo a dental procedure there is significant bleeding and if an antibiotic is not given then there may be bacterial colonization which can go into the body and can cause lot of problem especially endocarditis is very commonly associated with that and then we undergo lot of surgeries you know very well that there are large number of organisms on our skin the most common organism that is found on our skin is staphylococcus there are other organisms also so when the uh, surgeon is making an incision or a cut there is a chance that this organism can go into the body go into the blood stream spread all over the body and cause sepsis and other kind of issues so that is why before the surgery we usually give a prophylactic antibiotic so that after the incision even if the organism goes inside the antibiotic that had already been given will take care of it okay so it depends on which kind of surgery it is the drug of cho choice will keep on changing you can refer idsa guidelines you can refer cds cdc guidelines you can refer mohfw ministry of health and family welfare guidelines uh, there are uh, even if you can refer depiro handbook also there is a chapter on surgical prophylaxis which will give you amazing information on this different types of uh, surgeries and what are the different types of antimicrobials that are effective before we give antibiotic we should always look for antimicrobial or antibiotic sensitivity testing why because when a patient is coming to the hospital the patient will never know whether the patient is penicillin allergic cephalosporin allergic or some other antibiotic allergic now if the physician is directly giving the antibiotic and if the patient develops hypersensitivity reaction leading to anaphylactic shock it will be a matter of concern so that is why before giving surgical prophylaxis or even if before giving empirically you should give a test dose small dose and see whether there is a rash or a weal happening around that area if no then it is okay you can carry on with it if it is yes then it is documented on the medication sheet that the patient is allergic to amoxicillin the patient is allergic to polymyxin b the patient is allergic to vancomycin whatever it is and then we go for safer alternatives and as far as uh, uh, surgical prophylaxis is concerned let me tell you one thing fluoroquinolones aminoglycoside and 
vancomycin they should be given at least 2 hour before the surgical procedure because they require prolonged infusion the other antibiotics you can give within 1 hour before the surgery but when it comes to this antibiotics that i mentioned right now minimum 2 hour gap should be maintained so this is just a very precise summary about rational use of antimicrobials that i wanted to share with you i hope this video is informative for you if you want to know more details please connect to me in the whatsapp in the number given in the description below thanks a lot for listening bye